Basic binary and building blocks. The term binary comes from the late Latin binarius, consisting of two. Why is this important? Think of the loom in previous lessons. Pins could either be stopped or passed through the holes. There are only two modes, in or out. Let's have another example. Each letter in the Morse code alphabet is expressed as a, as a set of only two signals, a short beep or long beep. Every letter and every word and every sentence in the English language could be expressed as a combination of these two signals. In computer science, this concept can be translated to ones and zeros. Think of an electric circuit with a light bulb. Off indicates zero, on indicates one. Computers only understand electricity, so everything coders do with computers is, in the end, just a series of on, and on or off charges. A one or a zero determines the state of a light bulb. Each one or zero is a binary digit, or a bit. These are the atoms of computers, the fundamental units of modern computing. Imagine millions of these all working together. That's a modern computer. Commonly, you'll hear of them in group of eights, which is what we call a byte. For context, that picture on your computer that's 1.1 megabytes that's 8,800,000 ones and zeros. There are even files that store information entirely or partially in binary format. These files often end in the file format .bin. In addition, many computer systems contain a bin folder, which is a directory that stores important executable files, i.e. files that perform specific tasks or run specific programs. The name bin is short for binary, as these files are often binary executable files. When arranged correctly, these charges or bits can represent text, numbers and even logic. Everything we write, whether it is a name or if it's instructions, is in the end translated to bytes and bits. Abstraction, low level and high level languages. Writing programs in zeros and ones doesn't scale well. How would you even remember the bits that are necessary to represent the character H? People want the power that coding provides, but we need an easier way to code. The history of coding has seen an evolution towards making code more and more like human language, culminating in programming languages. High-level programming languages are designed to be human-readable and closer to natural language. Low-level programming languages are closer to the hardware and provide direct control over the computer's resources. They require a deep understanding of the underlying hardware architecture. Assembly language and machine language, binary code, fall into this category. The lower the abstraction, the closer we are to binary code, the ones and the zeros. The word abstraction can be challenging. The more abstract languages all boil down to the same ones and zeros. They've just found better ways to organize them. For example, while it is hard to read add and understand what that means, it's easier to read than write and write than 0100111. But add gets translated to the computer into 0100111 anyway in the end. The closer to the 0100111 we are, to binary, the lower the language. Now, let's say we put add and a representation for subtract together, and we store those two in math. That might look like math.add and math.subtract. This is then one level higher than simply add. The more we hide code and functionality inside other code, the higher level the language, and usually the closer we are to human language. What is a programming language? Assembly language is a low-level programming language that represents machine code instructions in a more human-readable format. 
It serves as an interface between the hardware architecture of a computer and the higher level programming languages. However, writing programs in assembly language requires a deep understanding of the underlying hardware architecture and is generally more complex and time consuming. In order to make code easier and more universal to different computer makers, people built higher level languages. This is a process of making a language more abstract, further and further away from concrete zeros and ones. These higher level languages also help us take care of low level details, the intricate and often complex tasks that deal directly with the computer's hardware, like how data is stored in memory, how to manage the processor's time between tasks, etc. If you're a programmer, it's great if you understand these, but it is even better if you don't have to worry about them every time you write code. Spoken languages are different ways of expressing the same idea to other people. In the same way, programming languages are just different ways of expressing the same idea to computers. A programming language is a formal language designed to communicate instructions to a computer. It can be used to create programs that control the behavior of a machine. Languages serve as a means for programmers to write code and create software applications. They provide a set of rules, syntax, and semantics that govern how programs are written and executed. When downloading the, a language, you then also download the necessary code that is needed to understand that programming language. For example, in JavaScript, in order to see the output in the command line, we write console log, and then here we write what we want to be seen. In Java, we write system.out.println, and then here we write what we want to be seen. This is the same action, but two different languages and two different ways to translate these commands into actions. If we have Java downloaded, we have the dictionary to translate so that the computer understands what to do. If programming languages can be equated to human languages such as English and Swedish, then the rules and syntax can be equivalent to grammar and what order you put words in. They allow programmers to express algorithms, perform computations, manipulate data, and control the behavior of a computer system. If we continue the metaphor, expressing algorithms is what you say and the ways you choose to express yourself in the human language. There are various types of programming languages, each with its own characteristics and purposes. Different programming languages might be better suited for different tasks, even if most of them can be used for most tasks. Some popular languages. Here are some examples of popular programming languages and their common uses. Python is a versatile and beginner-friendly language known for its simplicity and readability. It is widely used for web development, scientific computing, data analysis, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and automation. JavaScript is primarily used for web development, enabling dynamic and interactive features on websites. It is also commonly used for front-end and back-end of web development, mobile app development using frameworks like React Native, and server-side scripting. Java is a general purpose language known for its platform independence. It is widely used for building enterprise level applications, Android app development, large scale systems, and server side development. C Sharp is a language developed by Microsoft and is mainly used for Windows application development, game development using the Unity engine, and building enterprise level applications on the .NET framework. Swift is a modern programming language developed by Apple. It is designed to be efficient, safe and expressive, with a focus on providing a seamless experience for building various types of applications within the Apple ecosystem. Swift was introduced in 2014 as a replacement for Objective-C, and it has quickly gained popularity among developers for its speed, versatility and developer-friendly features. Comparing the difficulty of computer languages to human language is a subjective matter and can depend on various factors. Here are a few considerations to help understand the differences. 
Computer languages have strict syntax and grammar rules that must be followed precisely. Missing a single character or using incorrect punctuation can lead to errors. Human languages, on the other hand, have more flexibility and can tolerate vari variations in grammar and syntax. Human languages have vast vocabularies, often consisting of thousands or even millions of words. Learning and understanding all these words and their meanings can be challenging. In contrast, computer languages have a more limited vocabulary, with specific terms and keywords related to programming concepts. Human languages can be ambiguous, with words or phrases having multiple meanings depending on the context. This can make understanding and interpreting language more complex. Computer languages strive to minimize ambiguity by having precise and unambiguous instructions. Human languages are deeply connected to culture, history, and societal norms. Understanding and using language effectively often involves knowledge of cultural nuances. Computer languages, on the other hand, are designed to be universally understood by machines and are not tied to specific cultural or contextual factors. Human languages serve the purpose of communication and expressing complex ideas, emotions and experiences. Computer languages, on the other hand, are designed for instructing computers to perform specific tasks and computations. Overall, it can be said that computer languages are more rule-based and have a narrower focus compared to human languages. Thank you for listening. The slides for this presentation are available for download so you can read them if you need to. Until next time.